today we're using dreams to help us in our quest to beat all games. So far, I've been calling simple Argo enemies that have no understanding of what's happening. No thoughts, head empty. It's like a primitive way to learn. There is no planning, no reasoning, no higher brain function. It's just direct mapping from situations to actions, like it's an instinct. I hungry, I eat, road goes left, I go left. Which is fine, I mean, it works more or less. But we can do better. It doesn't sound like a winning strategy. And we want to be, we want to win. We want to be smart. We want to beat all games. So now imagine that our silly AI creature looks at the game to learn the rules, see what's happening, learn the dynamics, the physics, just understand the world. Then it closes its eyes and then it thinks, okay, so if I do this, this is what happens, so maybe let's not do this, maybe I should go forward, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it leverages the model of reality in its head to learn and make better decisions. Welcome to model-based reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is hard. We know this, I talked about this, but I want to be really good at it. So I thought to myself, what well, is something idiotically hard and ambitious to work on that would teach me a lot? And I picked Dreamer V3. That is the best and one of the most complicated reinforcement learning algorithms that we have today. That's why I wanted to build it and that's why it took me so long. I meant to say that it was a valuable experience and that I learned a lot. What makes the algorithm significant is that it was the first algorithm to mine diamonds in Minecraft without relying on human guidance. There was some trickery involved, like they sped up breaking blocks by 100 times because the algorithm would never like hold the mouse for long enough to break blocks. And as you see here, getting diamonds in fewer than 100 million frames is its max performance, not average performance. So it's not like Minecraft is solved, but it's something, it's pretty impressive still. And I implemented my version of the algorithm, so I know some things. I'm trying to be humble, but I know everything about it. So I can give you like an overview of how it works and everything what's happening there, but I'll make a separate technical deep dive into the code later, sometime. So how does Dreamer actually work? The answer is in the publication, but that's boring, but also in the name. It dreams. Wow. And what are dreams? They were monitoring rats brain activity as they walked the path, but then the rats went to sleep and somehow the brain activity was very similar as if though they were actively walking on that path. The animal is dreaming about running on the track. And what you're seeing is the decoded activity of a brief fragment of their dreams. This was remarkable. Animals learning something new during sleep. But you have to realize that reinforcement learning, learning how to do things, is not the only kind of learning. There's another kind of learning. And that's learning about things. It's learning through exploration. It's the learning that comes from discovery, and that is finding hidden connections between things that you did not yet know. And it appears that it is this kind of learning that may be taking place during sleep. It is not learning and simply reinforcing that the things that we have done, but rather learning about the things that we might do. Is this clear to you how this behavior could inspire us to make something like Dreamer? If we vastly simplify what animals do, we can copy the system that gathers experiences, replace them, and explores new behavior in its own head. This is the core idea behind Dreamer. Play the game, 
close your eyes, replaying the experiences, then revise your behavior. Just like our brains do it when we sleep. So the real learning happens in the head of the dreamer. And to illustrate how the dreams look like, I entered the head of our little dreamer. And as you can see, it's already kinda trippy. Now forward, 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 left, forward, right. Ah, no. Okay, as you can see, it's very hard to control, but we also in practice never do that long dream rollouts. We shouldn't do rollouts of 100 frames plus because the bias of the model starts being too big. The discrepancy between what happens in the model and what would happen in the actual game starts being too big. That's why in practice, we only go 15 steps forward into the gym. Right now, we're having fun. I don't know what's happening. I'm spinning uncontrollably. Let's try finding some road. Let's go forward. Oh, we have road, we have road. Forward, yes, no. Where did my road go? Oh. oh okay, whatever. Let's move on. It dreams about playing the game. Then it wakes up, plays the actual game, and it somehow got better through sleeping. And because it got better, it can go further in the game. It can maybe see states it haven't seen before. And it can use this new data to revise the world model that will closely match the new reality. So traditional model-free reinforcement learning plays the game to learn the behavior, but model-based dreamer plays the game to learn a world model which it uses to learn the behavior. Like the decision-making neural network never even sees the actual game. The observations, the reality is always encoded, compressed in the world model. And this is how we make decisions. That's why it's easier to make decisions because we operate on abstract ideas that are highly informative. Here is a quick comparison between raw observation versus reconstruction of the state after it got compressed. You can clearly see how we lose some detail, but preserve the crucial information that enables us to still make good decisions. And you know what? Playing the game in imagination is much faster than playing the actual game. Like with the rats example, they replay reality at 10 times the speed. Even for me as a human, when I'm awake, like it's much faster for me to think about what happens if I do something than to actually do it. At the cost of accuracy, right? That's why you sometimes need to gather experience. Sometimes we don't predict everything. But if our model is great, then we can do everything so effectively. It's crucial, for example, for robotics, where you can't just try things and risk breaking physical parts, but you can minimize your in-real-life work by maximizing the time spent imagining things. Notice also how accurate the simulators are, how precisely controlled environments they work in. But Dreamer could adapt on the spot after a good sleep. The simulators are handcrafted, and they will always have features of reality that are missing. So if you want to build a robot that you don't know what will encounter, that has to be potentially ready for anything, all by itself, you cannot use a classic simulator. It would have to be something closer to the dreamer. But okay, I complimented the dreamer nicely, but how does it actually play the game? So we have our world model that is used to learn efficiently, but when we play the actual game, the model is based, is grounded in reality, and it only creates the representation of the current state. And based on this directly, we make a decision.
Just like that. Game beaten. Easy. What wasn't easy is writing the algorithm. And it's still not fully finished, but at least the core works, so I can show it off a little. I'll do a code walkthrough when I'll be more or less happy with the code, so stay tuned for that because it's gonna be first tutorial like this on YouTube. That's kind of exciting. But for now, thanks for watching.